So if you do have um, something to sit on, like a block or a pillow or some books, you can do that. If not, just come to a comfortable seat. You can cross the legs. If this is uncomfortable, you can also kneel. All right? And if you do kneel, I recommend sitting up on something. And just keep in mind that you know just this class can be up to your energy level. So I'll give you modifications. And you know, it's up to you. You can skip parts and take child's pose depending what your energy level feels like. So your yoga, your yoga practice is your practice. So even though it's a group class, you guys can you know, give your body what it needs. So first finding a nice tall spine and draw the shoulders back and down. And then just start, take the right arm behind the back and try to wrap it around the left side of your waist and then interlace your fingers and make like a little basket with your knuckles, with your hands. So press the lower back into that right forearm, lift the spine a little taller now slowly reach the left ear toward the left shoulder. And also start to notice your breath here as you just loosen and stretch that right side of the neck. And then nice and slow, start to take your chin towards the left shoulder. So you're just going to rotate your head a little bit, moving a little bit deeper into that trap. Continue to sit tall and start to tune into your breath. So just focusing on your breaths here as we start to very slowly move and stretch. Good, and then releasing the head back to center and then you're gonna take the interlace of your hands and move it over to the other side of the waist. Again, pressing the lower back into that left arm, left arm into the lower back and try to sit a little taller from that little uh, pressure going on between the arm and the lower back. And then nice and slow, right ear towards the right shoulder and hold. You can even close the eyes here. Listening to your breath. Good. And keeping the spine tall, be careful not to lean over to the right. Start to just take the chin, right chin over toward the right shoulder. Good. Moving a little deeper into that trap and the side of the neck. And that trap muscle actually runs all the way to the side of the neck. So sometimes when we, uh, our necks are tight, it's actually just tight trap muscles. Those big triangle shaped muscles in the side of our neck that all of us CrossFitters love. Good, slowly release the head back to center. Release the uh, knuckles to the lower back and then release the hands to the thighs. And then just close the eyes for a couple moments. And just observe any imprint of those couple stretches on the body. Notice if you feel any sensations, any effects maybe a little looser on the sides of the neck. Take a few breaths here and allow yourself to draw your attention to just yourself and your mat and your practice for this hour. So this is an hour to be totally selfish. Give yourself some self-care, give yourself some downtime and allow your mind to forget about the rest of your day. slowly blinking the eyes open and if you're on a block or a stack of books or a pillow you can come to your sit on the mat and take your towel or your strap with you or close by and come to sit with in a straight leg position or dandasana 
and then take your towel or your strap. You can bend the right knee and bring the strap around that right foot and then go ahead and straighten the leg and you can slide your hands down that towel or that strap and try to find that L shape to the body. And then from here, we're just going to keep the left leg on the mat. We're going to rock onto our back and lift the right leg up into the air. Keeping the left thigh pressing down. Now start to use your hands on that towel or strap to gently draw the right leg in. And nice and slow. It's early. It's probably the first time we stretched our hamstrings today. So take it easy. Relax the shoulders. And start to reach through the heel a little bit more as you draw the toes in towards your face. So the foot becomes a little more active and flexed. And that left leg is active too. So think of the inner left thigh spinning down towards the mat and flex the left foot like you're pressing it against a wall. Take a few breaths here. And then placing both pieces of the towel or the strap in the right hand, take the left arm out to the side. With your anchor of your left leg pressing down and your left shoulder pressing down, start to lower the right leg out to the side, but keep drawing the shin in towards your face. So keep, keep your butt on the mat and keep both shoulder blades on the mat. And keep that flex to the foot. So press through the heel, draw the toes in towards you. Relax your shoulders. So we'll revisit this position a little bit later, these couple poses in a standing orientation. So keeping this imprint in your brain for later on. Good. Slowly come back to center. Now you're just going to lower the right leg down and bring yourself up to sit. So create a little bit of momentum coming up to sit. Good. Now take the strap in your left hand and reach your right arm up. Take an inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, reach the right arm towards the back of your mat. So you're going to twist to the right, sit tall, and then any amount, you're going to lift the right leg. Good. So right arm is reaching back, right leg is lifted, spine is tall. Take a couple breaths. Good. As you inhale, sweep the right arm up to the sky, both hands to the strap. And then exhale, lower the right leg down. And then we'll come to the other side. So you can bend the left knee to just get the position of that strap or that towel. <clears throat> come to that L-shaped position or that Dandasana position. And then one piece, you're going to lower, lie down on the mat as the left leg now reaches up. Again, nice and easy. Probably the first hamstring opener of the day. But staying active through the right leg. So press the right inner thigh down. Flex the right foot like you were pressing it into a wall. And then start to flex the left foot a little bit. Draw the toes in towards your face and press through that left heel. Relax the shoulders. Relax the face and focus on breathing as you exhale, releasing wherever you feel tension. Good. Placing both pieces of the towel or strap in the left hand, the right arm out to the side. So now your right side is going to be your anchor. Press the right thigh down, right shoulder down, and lower the left leg out to the left as you draw it in towards you. Keep the flex to that foot. Keep reaching through the heel, drawing the toes in towards you. And your hand is putting a little pressure on pulling the, th the shin in towards your face. Good. Relax the shoulders. Couple breaths, nice deep breaths. Good, and bringing the leg back to center. And in one motion, we're going to sit up and lower the left leg down, coming back to that seated position. Now, strap in the right hand onto the strap, left arm reaches up. Inhale, sit nice and tall. 
And as you exhale, twist to the left and reach towards the back of your mat or the front of your mat. Lift the spine tall and then lift the left leg up into the air. Try to keep that leg straight. Keep the spine lifting, rotating the right ribs forward and around. Good, breathe here. Good, as you inhale, sweep the left arm up, back to the strap, and then as you exhale, lower the left leg down. Good, and then you can put that to the side for now and just bend both knees and start to take a couple rocks up and down the spine. Hands behind the thighs and the knees, kind of open and close to create a little bit of momentum. And then take one more rock and come all the way up to sit and bring yourself to a tabletop position with the wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Spread the fingers out well, grounding through all 10 knuckles. So think about really activating the hands and making the hands a little bit wider here and begin just with some cat cow. So as you inhale, drop the belly, arch the back, gaze up. And then as you exhale, round, press the mat away, look towards your belly button. Do that, guys. Inhaling, drop the belly, arch the back, gaze up. And exhale, nice big round as you press the mat away, tuck your tailbone. And do that a couple times, just at your own pace. All right, try and make those movements a little bit bigger every time. Every time you inhale, maybe you arch a little bit more. Every time you exhale, you round a little more. Good, guys. And then coming back to a neutral spine after your next exhale. Walk in the hands a couple inches ahead of the shoulders, so setting up for more of a down dog stance. Keep pressing all 10 knuckles down into the mat. Tuck the toes. And from here, rotate your elbow creases forward. So we want to find an external rotation with the arms. So elbow creases spin forward. Triceps start to energize a little and hug into the bone. Press the palms down. And then lift the knees. With bent knees, reach the hips all the way back. So just a super bent knee downward facing dog here. Now focus on lengthening the sides of the waist. So really press the hands down. Stretch through the sides of the waist. Reach the hips back. Take an inhale, and then as you exhale, slowly start to straighten the knees into down dog, so our hamstrings should be a little open now in this position. If you need to pedal the feet, go ahead. If you're okay with just staying with the heels at rest, go ahead, but if you need to pedal a couple times, doing that. Good, be mindful of the rotation of the arms. So the tendency is for the elbows to kind of spin inward but we want to spin the elbow creases outward, right? It's a little bit harder, but it's gonna open up the shoulders a lot more. Good, guys, take a couple breaths there. <clears throat> Draw the navel into the spine. As you inhale, come forward to plank. We'll take a modified chaturanga, lower the knees, keep the elbows hugged in, lower all the way to your bellies. Point the toes, press the tops of the feet down. Inhale, lifting to baby cobra, reach the heart forward. Exhale, fold. Tuck the toes, pull your belly in. Lift the kneecaps. And then press up the plank in one piece. And then downward facing dog. Good. From here, slowly make your way to the front of your mat. Taking a bunch of little baby steps to get there. And then take your feet as wide as the mat, bend the knees, drop the head, hold on to opposite elbows, and just sway from side to side. So heavy head, heavy shoulders, lengthen and relax that spine. And then just switch the grip on your elbows. Our non-habitual grip, we are always creatures of habit, so it might feel a little awkward or tighter when you do that, right? Because it 
typically that our tissues are a little tighter when we don't always visit a certain position. All right, release the elbows, heel toe your feet together. And with a bend to the knee, roll up. Let your head be heavy, one vertebrae at a time. Making your way to stand at the front of your mat. In Tadasana, facing the palms forward. Good. Press down through the feet and stand tall. And, and sense as though you can stand with a little less effort here. So as you stand taller, it actually becomes easier. As you ground down through the feet, you can lift taller. Good. Press down through the feet. Inhale, reach the arms out, around and up. Exhale, long spine, forward fold. Inhaling up to a flat back. Draw the shoulders back and down. Exhale, step just your right foot to the back of your mat. Lower the right knee down. And inhale, reaching the arms up. From here, hook just the thumbs. And find a little tug of war between the thumbs. So as you kind of draw the thumbs against one another, the fingertips spread out. Now reach the fingertips up. Lengthen through the sides of the waist. And start to press the hips forward and down a little bit more. So as you come forward and down with the hips, you reach up and lengthen. Good. Relax the face and breathe. Good. Take one more inhale here. Exhale. Release the arms along, hands alongside the front foot. And we're going to step back to a child's pose. So widen the knees. Bring the big toes to touch. Bring the hips to the heels, but keep the arms actively reaching forward. Triceps are engaged. Elbows are lifted up off the mat. And your next inhale, come up to tabletop or just come onto the knees and exhale downward facing dog. Couple breaths here. And then look between the hands, step the right foot forward. That's actually correct because it's taking us to the other side. So right foot again forward, but that brings us to the other leg. Inhale, reaching up. Now take the opposite hook of the thumbs. Right, the weight's going to feel a little weird. Again, it's usually tighter that way because we, we visit it less. The tissues are a little tighter in our non-habitual side. Lengthen up through the fingertips and the sides of the waist and keep reaching up as you start to reach the hips. Press the hips forward and down to the mat. Right, so think about the shape getting bigger in both direc directions. As the hips reach down, the fingertips reach up. Good. One more inhale. Exhale, lower the hands to frame the front foot. Lift the back knee. Step the left foot to the front of your mat. Inhaling up to a flat back. And exhale, fold. Press down to the feet. Come all the way up to stand. Reach the arms out, around and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, reaching up. Moving on for a sun salute A. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling up to a flat back. Exhale this time, step both feet back to plank pose. If you're ready for full chaturanga, knees stay up, elbows stay hugged in. You can take the modified version if you want. Upward facing dog, straighten the arms, roll the shoulders back and down, lift the heart, draw the wrists to the feet, and then exhale, downward facing dog. Couple breaths there, guys. Shake up the head a little bit. Shake it out, yes. Shake it out, no. Beautiful. Nice deep breaths. Good. From here, bring the big toes to touch. Come high up onto the tippy toes. Bend the knees. Look between the hands and step or float or hop to the front of your mat. Inhaling up to a flat back. Exhale, fold. Press down to the feet. As you inhale, come all the way up to stand. Arms out, around and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good. Moving on. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, long spine, forward fold. Inhale up to a flat back. Exhale, stepping back to plank pose. If you practice jumping back, you can. Lower down, chaturanga, elbows stay in. We never actually touch the mat. 
Inhale, straighten the arms, up dog, roll the shoulders back and down. Draw your navel in, lift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Take a few breaths there, guys. Good, very nice. Gina, you have the perfect camera angle. I can see you so well in your <laughs> positioning. Yeah, love it. Okay, good. Inhale, lifting the right leg up into the air behind you. Exhale, stepping the right foot between the hands. We'll set up for warrior two. So spin the left heel down. There's a line from your front heel to the middle of your back foot. Left arm reaches forward, up, and then to the back of the room. Gazing over the middle finger of your right hand, pressing the right knee out toward the right pinky toe. Draw the navel in, drop the shoulders away from the ears, and breathe. Maybe come a little deeper, bend to that front knee. Working on finding the balance between effort and ease. So although the poses might get harder, can we find that easefulness? By flipping the right palm into the air, into, flipping the right palm up, inhale, reach back, peaceful or reverse warrior. So again, think about making this shape bigger. As you reach back, bend the front knee a little bit further, stretch through the right side of the rib cage. Nice deep breaths here. Feet are grounding down. Good, with your inhale, straighten your right leg. So re reverse or peaceful triangle pose. And with that front knee straight, you can really find so much length. So press your right big toe, net, toe down, reach through your left pinky finger, right? Maintain all that length that we just created on that right side. Let's take it into triangle pose, nice and long. So reach forward, hinge at the hip, reach, 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 reach. When you can't reach anymore, hand just lowers wherever it lands, right? So the shin, ankle, if you do have a block, you can bust out your block or your book. Right? And the point is to not crunch in that right side of the waist. We created all that space, so stay long. Reach the right armpit away from the right hip crease. Gaze up toward the left fingertips if it's comfortable. Go ahead, grounding down through the feet. Go ahead, stretch the wrists apart. Go ahead, pressing down through the feet. Come all the way up to stand. And take the hands to your hips. We're going to rotate the right toes in so that the feet become parallel. We're now facing the long edge of your mat, coming into a wide leg forward fold. So keeping the elbows, the hands on the hips to start, and just draw the elbows together behind you. Notice how that kind of opens the chest and reinforces that good posture, standing tall. Take an inhale, and then exhale, hinging forward at the hips. Now here, try to keep some weight in your toes because the tendency is to shift back into the heel. So your toes should be really active and you should feel pressure in the toes holding your balance. You can release the hands down to the mat or blocks. And if you can't quite reach the mat, just keep the hands at the hips. If your hands do reach the mat, see if you can walk your fingers that they're aligned with your toes and then your elbows start to create a right angle there. Good. Breathing there. Good, guys. Couple more breaths. Keeping some pressure in the toes. So you're actually gonna feel like you're leaning forward a little bit as the crown of the head reaches towards the ground. And then slowly walk the hands back so that they're underneath those shoulders. Keeping the torso where it is, just take the hands to the hips. Squeeze the elbows together behind you. Press down to the feet. Come up with a nice flat back. And then turn the right toes back toward the front of your mat. Arms out to a T. Warrior two. Inhale just for a breath. Reverse your warrior. And then exhale, cartwheel the hands down to the mat, stepping back to plank pose. Lower down, chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Good, guys, couple breaths there. All right, 
other side. Inhale, left leg lifts up into the air behind you. Exhale, step it between the hands. Right heel spins down. Front heel aligns with the middle of the back foot. Right arm reaches forward, up, and then to the back of your mat. So you kind of just windmill the arms open. You're pressing the left toe, left knee out to the pinky toe side of the foot. Stretch through the wrists. Drop the shoulders away from the ears and breathe. Navel drawing in, tailbone drawing down, crown of the head lifting. Relaxing the face. Effort and ease, finding that balance between effort and ease. Flipping the left palm up, inhale, reverse your warrior. And make the shape bigger as you reach back, bend a little further into that left knee. Stretching through the left side of the waist, creating all that space. Go ahead now inhale, straighten that left leg. Reverse triangle. So even more length here. You can really feel it as you press through your big left toe and reach through your left pinky finger. Right, we want to create all that length and keep it as we move toward triangle pose. That's why we don't want to just reach for the ground. We want to use maybe the block or the shin. So go ahead and reach, hinge at the hips, reach your left arm forward, keep all that space on the left side of the waist and just lower the hand to where you don't feel crunchy on that left side of the waist. Right arm reaches up, reaching the wrists apart, stacking the shoulders, drawing the right ribs back. Take some breaths. Draw the navel in, press down through the feet, come all the way up to stand. Hands to the hips again, turn the left toes in. <clears throat> so I'll be facing the long edge of your mat. This time we'll take an interlace of the fingers behind the back. So interlace the fingers, if that is unavailable, grab your towel, grab your strap. Pressing, excuse me, down through the feet, inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, reach the chest forward as you hinge. Remember, keep some weight in your toes and let the arms come off the back any amount. Everyone's going to be different. So you're just working in that direction and imagining the crown of the head eventually coming to the floor and touching and the arms all the way to the floor also <laughs> in the full, full version, which not many of us can get to, so don't worry. But picturing that, that end point, right, it helps us get there little by little. Beautiful, guys. Take some deep breaths, keep some weight in the toes. Good. Now press down to the feet, slowly come up to stand. Release the arms out to a T, turn the left toes forward, warrior two. Flip your left palm, reach back for just a breath. And then exhale, cartwheel the hands down to the mat. You guys go ahead, step back to plank. Lower down, chaturanga, belly tight, elbows in. Good, breathe into your back bend. Roll the shoulders back and down, lift the heart. Good, exhale, downward facing dog. Good, guys. Holding in. Bring the big toes to touch. Come up all the way onto your tippy toes, bend the knees, lift between the hands, pull the belly in, and step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhaling to a flat back. Exhale, fold. Pressing down to the feet, inhale, come all the way up to stand, reach the arms out, around and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. So we'll come into a quick balancing pose for tree and then we'll move on to a, slowly increase the difficulty of our balancing poses next time. So coming on to the left toes, grounding down through the right foot. So the bottom of the foot either comes to the calf, toes can stay there, or taking that left foot all the way up to the inner thigh. You can use your hand to get it there. And then bring the hands to meet at the center of the heart. So the foot and the thigh make a little sandwich. So the thigh presses into the foot, foot presses into the thigh, 
Right foot presses down, stand taller, make your shape bigger. Have I fallen out of it? Good, if you're able to and you'd like to, reach the arms up, spread the palms out. Right, and you can really feel the sense of making your shape bigger here as you reach through the fingertips, spread them out. Focus your gaze on something that's not moving in front of you, kind of helps. Good, let the palms touch, draw the thumbs to the center of the heart. Bringing the left knee out in front of you, lifting the knee, and then straighten the leg, and just hold and breathe. Lift those toes up, flex the foot. Good, one more inhale. Exhale, release. Release the hands, maybe shake out that right leg a little bit. And moving right into the other side. So left leg grounds, right toes either to the mat, right foot below the knee, or right foot all the way to the inner thigh. And remember that sandwich action. So you're going to hug into the middle. The thigh presses into the foot, foot presses into the thigh. Left foot presses down and you stand taller here. Hands meet at the center of the heart. And if you're feeling up for it, reach up, separate the palms. Focus your gaze on a sort of single point ahead of you that's not moving and make the shape bigger. Reach through the fingertips, spread the palms out. Beautiful, guys. Good, palms touch. Exhale, draw the thumbs to the center of the heart. Bring the right knee out in front of you. Knee is hip high. Straightening that leg and lifting it as high as you can. Hold and breathe. Good, one more inhale. Exhale, float the right leg down to meet the left. Release the arms. Tadasana, mountain pose. Pressing down through the feet, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhaling up to a flat back. Exhale, lower the hands, stepping back to plank pose. Lower down, chaturanga, keep the elbows hugged in. Breathe into your back bend. Roll the shoulders back and down. Straighten the arms, lift the heart. Exhale, roll over the toes, down or facing dog. <clears throat> Good, from here, inhale, lifting the right leg up into the air behind you. Exhale, step it between your hands. Spin the left heel down. Now align the heels so the shoulders and the hips are going to be square forward for warrior one. Inhale, reaching straight ahead and up. So the feet are a little bit more separate than they were in warrior two. Think about drawing the right hip crease back. Belly draws in and to the right. Shoulders square forward. Press down through the feet as you reach up through the fingertips. Make the shape bigger. Good. Breathe in here. Now exhale, reach the fingertips forward, hovering right above that thigh. If you need to take the hands to the hips, you can. Try to keep them reaching forward. Now float up onto your left toes. Take a little baby step in and start to shift forward more onto that right leg, coming into warrior three. So lots of options for the hands. You can bring the hands to prayer, hands to hips, hands alongside you, arms reaching forward. It will be your hardest variation. Left toes point to the mat. Yeah, so the left inner thigh spins up. Beautiful, guys. Arms framing the head if you can. Take one more in breath. Exhale, both hands meet the mat or blocks. So trying to find a straight right leg. If you have something to place your hands on, one or two blocks, you can. So we're focusing here on the forward fold over that right leg, standing split. Left leg lifts, but try to keep the left toes again pointed towards the mat so the hips stay square. Good. Take one more inhale. And then exhale. Bend the right knee. Step the left foot back, but you're not, not as far as you normally would and come up with to stand. So you're in a shorter uh, 
stance than you were in Warrior Two. The back toes are pointed, sorry, Warrior One, the back toes are pointed towards the upper left hand corner. Take the hands to your hips, setting up for pyramid pose. Again, we have a shorter stance here. Now with your right hand, pull your right hip crease back. So keep your hands here, making sure that your hips are keeping your <laughs> square forward. Press down through the feet, lengthen the spine, inhale. Exhaling, coming forward halfway. Now take your right hand, press your right hip back. Pause, inhale, and then exhale. If you can go any further, go ahead. Again, maybe you take your hands to blocks or a block, or maybe just the shin, or maybe they stay on your hips. Right, but try to find a position where the leg is straight and that right thigh bone is plugging back into that right hip crease. Mike, take your feet closer together like, um, like, like on a line. Yes, there you go. Good, guys. Deep breaths. As we exhale, we're going to bend that knee, stepping back to plank pose. Take an inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing. Exhaling, downward facing. Go to the other side. Inhale, left leg lifts up into the air behind you. Exhale, step it between your hands. Left heel spins down, so again, the heels are aligned here. Feet are slightly different in warrior one. Inhale, reach the arms forward and up. Good, now belly draws in and to the left. Left thigh bone plugs back into the left hip socket. Breathing here, reaching through the fingertips. Pressing to the outer edge of that back foot. Breathing in. And then exhale, hinging forward, hover that uh, torso above that thigh, keep reaching forward. And then come on up onto your right toes, take a little step in, draw the navel in when you're ready, shift forward to warrior three. Again, lots of arm variations here. Prayer, hips alongside you, airplane, I know I didn't say that on the other side. But right toes point to the mat, so inner right thigh spins up. Beautiful, guys. Take some breaths. All right, we're trying to make that letter T shape to that body. Very good. Awesome, guys. As you exhale, taking both hands down to the mat in front of you, so wherever arm variation you had, releasing that into standing split, you can be on a block. Focusing on the forward fold over that left leg and the right toes still stay pointed toward the mat. So try to resist the urge to want to open that hip up. Good guys, breathing there, release that left hamstring. One more inhale. Exhale, bend the left knee, step the right foot all the way to the back of your mat and step back to downward facing dog. Good, as you inhale, come forward, moving through your vinyasa. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful, guys. Couple breaths here. Child's pose if you need it. Got one more standing sequence. Downward facing dog. From here, inhale the right leg up into the air behind you. Now exhale, come forward to come forward to plank. Bring the right knee to your nose, and then extend the right leg out to the left. So opening up the IT band here. So right knee into the nose, and then kick the right leg out to the left to deepen the stretch. You can walk your wrists in, Jackie. This is for you. IT band. <laughs> Not the most comfortable stretch, but stay with it, breathe. You should be on the outer edge of that right foot. We'll come into a little more relieving pose in just a moment. Good, breathe. Good, now from here you're gonna shift onto the right hand 
and lift the left arm up, coming into fallen triangle. So the bottoms of the feet come to the mat. Good, reach the wrists apart. Couple breaths. One more inhale. Exhale, left hand meets the mat, and from here we'll come into pigeon pose. So re-bend that right knee and slide the shin just about underneath your belly button. Pointing the back toes, walking the hands in, first to lengthen, inhale, lengthen the spine. And then exhale, walking the hands forward any amount. Maybe resting the head on a block or a pillow, or you can stack your fists, big fist stack them, stack your palms. Beautiful guys, breathe there. Trying to keep the hips square forward, so we're trying not to rock onto either side of that hip. Take some breaths, let it go. Good, let's slowly walk the hands in. Tucking the back toes. Let's come to a three-legged dog and just shake the hip out. You can head open the hip and you can stack the hips. Good, and then lower back down, we're facing dog, your choice. Stay here or move through a vinyasa. It's up to you, or maybe even child's pose, depending how you feel. Good, guys. Wherever you are, hold and breathe. One more side than our grand finale. <laughs> All right, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts up into the air behind you. Now inhale, come forward to plank. Bring the left knee in towards your nose. And then straighten the left leg and kick the left foot out to the right. I'm not sure if there's actually a name for this pose. <laughs> I have to figure that out. But to deepen it, you walk your hands into your hips a little bit more. Straight left leg. You're on the outer edge of your left foot. Right? Opening that IT band, that outer edge of that left leg. Beautiful. Stay with it. We'll open it up to fall on triangle soon, and it's going to feel so good. Good. One more inhale. Good. Now start to shift the weight to the left wrist. Your right heel is going to spin down, right arm reaches up, fall in triangle, reach the wrists apart, bottoms of the feet will be on the ground, beautiful, lift the hips. Awesome guys, that's like such a relief after coming to that IT band stretch, for me anyway. Good, one more breath. Exhale, right hand down, from here we're going to slide right into pigeon, so square the hips forward, position that Shin, so it's about right under your belly button. Straighten your back leg. First, walk your hands in and lengthen as you inhale. And then walking forward, lowering the torso on the chest, any amount, resting your head. Maybe it's your fists, maybe it's your palms. Maybe your head is on a block. Good, guys. Breathe to release that tightness and that tension. Good. All right, walk the hands in. Tucking the back toes, let's step it back to a three-legged dog, circle the leg out. Stack the hips, just move it around a little bit. <clears throat> Good, and then come to down dog, child's pose. If you want one more final vinyasa, go for it right here. It's your last opportunity, at least for today. Child's pose is an option, or just press to down dog for a couple breaths. <clears throat> And then when you're ready, make your way to the front of your mat. So take your time getting there. You can either step or you can hop. 
And once you're there, inhale, find your flat back position. Take your time. Exhale, fold. And then coming all the way up to stand. Arms come out, around and up as you breathe in. And exhaling arms alongside you as you breathe out. Good. All right, so let's take our strap. Or warming up to our peak pose. So we did this similar. I'm just going to move my mat a little bit so I don't hit the wall. Similar position where we started on our back. All right, so we're just going to change our orientation. Um, a little bit, well, a lot, and make it standing. Obviously, when we flip things around, it becomes a little harder. So, what you can do is always just modify to hold the knee. You can even bring your fingertips to like a wall if your balance is just not happening today, you know, or a couch, whatever is close by. So, uh, feel free to use something next to you for balance. I'll show you both versions. Um, so if you're going to try to come to a straight leg, bring in the strap to the bottom of the right foot or the towel, and then first bring the chest up, right? Our option is just hand to knee, right? So this is our modification there. Hopefully I'll be able to do this with you, but don't judge me. <laughs> Standing nice and tall, so the long spine is most important, and then slowly extend the right leg, and you can slide your hand on the strap any amount. Good, draw the right shoulder blade back and down, and lift your left arm up to the sky. Good, focus on something in front of you that's not moving. Ground down through the left leg. Good, now start to take the right leg out to the right and the left arm out to the left. Let me face you. I'll, be on, I'll, I'll look like I'm opposite, but just so you can see what it looks like. Right leg out to the right, left arm out to the left. Maybe you look to the left. Don't follow me, I'm falling all over the place over here. Going to the mod. Again, the mod is just hand to the knee. Good, now come back to center. I'm gonna show you the mod. It's mod. <laughs> Left arm comes up. Now left arm takes hold of the strap. All right, I'm bending the knee. Right arm reaches up. Now reach your right arm behind you. So very similar pose we were just sitting in the beginning of class. Chest lifts. Try to straighten that right leg if you can, if you have the strap or the towel, and you're twisting back to the right. Draw the left ribs forward, stand tall. Go ahead and heel back to center, and then release down. Nice guys, I know that's a tough one. So again, left and right might be better or worse. So we'll switch to that opposite. Again, you can always just you know, bring your fingertips to a wall or something to try to balance there. So first starting left leg, standing tall, strap or towel around the left foot, straightening that leg. I'm gonna take them on. My balance is not on point today. Good, so left leg is straight or left hand is to the knee, right arm reaches up. Good, ground down through the right foot. And just go with it. If it's not quite happening today, don't worry about it. Let it go. Go when you're ready. Left leg comes out to the left. Right arm out to the right. Maybe look towards your right thumb. It's going to make it harder, just so you know. Go ahead, guys. Good. Taking the left leg back to center. Right arm either comes to the knee or right hand comes to the strap. Left arm reaches up. Lengthen the spine and then twist toward the left to reach the left arm to the back of your mat. Straighten the left leg if you can. Stand tall. How we doing? Good. Yeah, nice. Nice, Mike Howard. Nice, Robin. Good, guys. Nice, Jax, very good. All right, slowly, slowly, slowly release. Come out, release the strap. Back into mountain pose, palms face forward, and just close the eyes for a couple breaths. And just allow that to settle in. Maybe the 
heart's beating a little quicker right now. So just take a couple breaths, quiet it down. Blink the eyes open. Press down through the feet, reach the arms out, around and up. Exhale, long spine, forward fold. Inhaling up to a flat back. And then from here, just come back to a child's pose. So a nice, relaxing child's pose. Soften the arms, reach the hips to the heels. Give me a time check. Do I got time flies when you're having fun? Good, breathe there. Send some breath into the back of the ribs. And then slowly walk the hands in. Shift the hips to either side and come onto your backs. We'll throw one quick back bend in there. So if you do have a block or a similar object, go ahead and take that and place it between the thighs. If not, it's okay. But I want you to imagine there's something there so you can keep the knees in line with the hips. So bend the feet, bend the knees. Take the feet pretty close to your butt. And again, the knees are going to stay in line with the hips. So if you do have a block, it's going to help with that support. Now bend the elbows, press the backs of the arms down into the mat, puff the chest. Now keep puffing the chest, press the feet down, lift the hips. And then bring the arms underneath you if it's available, if you can interlace the fingers. And what also what you can do is you can rock left to right once and then try to tuck your shoulders underneath your ribcage. So those deltoid muscles, try to roll them underneath. Keep pressing the triceps down, lift the chest. And then isometrically press the feet down and forward to find a little more space. Release the hands if you have them underneath the back and tuck the tailbone and try to lower down first from your middle back, I'm sorry, your upper back, your middle back, and then your lower back. So the hips are the last thing to touch. If you do have a block, go ahead, place it to the side and hug the knees in and just make a couple circles with the knees. And then circle the opposite direction. And then place the feet back down on the mat, knees stay bent. And then from here, you're just gonna make a little adjustment with your hips before we come into our twist. So lift the hips and just shift them to the left a couple inches. So you're just placing them to the left side of your mat. And now take the knees into your chest as much as you can, and then knees over to the right. So the hips just shift to the left, knees come to the right, and then bring the arms out to a T position if it's available. That just helps align your spine a little bit better when you start with the hips a little bit over to the side. If it's comfortable, gaze all the way towards your left fingertips. And just breathe and relax. So start to Release all the energy of holding yourself up and holding yourself in these hard balancing poses. Let your muscles relax here. So you're supported by the floor underneath you so you can expend less energy holding yourself up. All right, coming back to center. Adjusting your hips first so they're back in neutral. So hips and feet are aligned, then lift the hips Pick them up and place them a few inches to the right side of your mat. Knees into the belly and then knees to the left. Arms out to a T. If it's comfortable, gaze all the way towards your right fingertips. And again, release all the efforts of holding yourself up. So just feel the ground and the earth underneath you and just give into that support. Take the knees back to center. 
feet to the mat and then just adjust the hips so the back and center. And then take the knees back in, bring the bottoms of the feet together and interlace your fingers around your toes, make a little basket. And try to take the knees out to the side and gently press the heels in towards the inner thighs or Baddha Konasana, seated or supine Baddha Konasana. And then from here, slide the hands to the outer edges of your feet, coming into a happy baby pose. So the arms are inside the knees, hands to the outsides of the feet, and then lift the bottoms of the feet so that they face the sky. And you can rock side to side a little bit. Try to press the low back down into the mat. And if there's any final shape or twist or pose you want to take before Shavasana, go ahead and taking that final shape or pose. If there's nothing, you can just start to place yourself into Shavasana. So coming to lie flat on your backs, letting the toes fall out to the side, facing the palms up. And if you have some space, feel free to, you know, take a bigger shape. So take your arms wider, take your feet wider. And just try to make sure your hands and your feet are not touching anything because sometimes that just sense of touch distracts us from this final relaxation. My Shavasana, this is why we practice yoga so we can spend some time here. So allow your body to completely relax. And this is your opportunity to Allow your body to absorb all the good movements, all the good breathing. If you have something to cover your eyes, you can do that. If you have a pillow, you can place it underneath your knees. And just allow the bones and muscles to start to feel a little heavier. Allow the skin to start to feel a little heavier like it was a really heavy weighted blanket placed on top of you. Allow the jaw to relax and separate the teeth. Allow the eyes to be absorbed in the eye sockets. Sense that the back of the head can start to melt and sink into the mat underneath you. So completely release the weight of your head, softening the front of the throat, softening the corners of the mouth, softening the space between your eyebrows, and completely surrendering to gravity. The only motion that exists is that of your breath. And if you find your mind starting to wander or think of the events of your day, just focus back to listening to your inhales and exhales and focus on the gentle movement that the breath brings to the body in this final relaxation pose, Shavasana.
and invite small movements back through the fingers and the toes. Start to circle around the ankles and the wrists. And rock your head from side to side. Move or stretch in any way that you need to reawaken. And when you're ready, bend the knees and roll all the way onto the right side, <clears throat> resting your head on your bottom arm like a pillow. And then placing the left hand in front of you, gently press yourself up to a comfortable seated position and let the hands meet at the center of the heart. And we'll close with one ohm. Inhale. Oh. The light within me sees and honors the same light within each of you. Thank you for sharing your practice. Namaste.